Hello, hello, good evening and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me live or on Catch Up or Replay. My name is Heather Thomas. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Fairham in the United Kingdom, um, otherwise known as the Songbird Stamper. And every Thursday evening, if I'm not working, I come here live with a crafty fun with you guys and uh, absolutely love it. Oh, Wendy, bless you. Me too. It's been a long, been a long old day. I have been working today. Came home, cooked some tea and then... Um, here for a bit of watercolour fun this evening so fairly chilled out um yeah I've called it the crazy watercolouring because it looks a bit looks a bit crazy when you do the background but it's so much fun and this cheerful daisy stump set hello Shaz you made it this evening I managed to um, schedule this a lot earlier than last week <laughs> um so yeah cheerful daisies I can't stop using this set I will say this is potentially my most used set ever it's had a lot of use. Honestly, just works so well with so many things. And we I love it with watercolouring. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of that this evening. Ah, so Cheerful Daisy stamp set and Cheerful Daisy dies. That's what we're also going to use. Hey, Joanna. I feel like I'm on a bit of a roller coaster this evening. So before I get crafting, apologies, there is going to be a bit of chitter chatter because this is in the house. I wish I could show you the inside, but I cannot. I am not allowed. I would get my hand slapped. So this is the mini catalogue. I just want to rifle through its pages, but I can't. Uh, September to December, so pre-order at the moment. Oh, yours came today as well. Honestly, it's it's just nice, isn't it? I mean, the PDF, we get to see as demonstrators, we get to see the catalogue um, early. So we get to see the PDF. We've had that for about a week now. Um, I have placed my pre-order. And the reason I feel like I'm on a bit of a roller coaster is because it, I paid for expedited shipping. Um, it didn't get picked the day it was supposed to. So I rung Stampin' Up. They were amazing. They were amazing. They've, they're going to refund my, my shipping costs and my expedited costs. And they got it out straight away the next day. And I've been kind of tracking it. And, um, and then all of a sudden I got a notification this evening said that they needed clearance information. And I was like, oh, well, it's not going to come tomorrow now, is it? But it has now departed its last location and is on its way. So I hope, fingers crossed, it'll be here tomorrow. I am working tomorrow night, um, but I plan to go live on Saturday morning if it turns up. So anybody's around Saturday morning, um, when I get home from work at seven o'clock in the morning, I will try not to jump on straight away. But it's half eight, nine o'clock, I might jump on and do a bit of an unboxing as I go through it all. Hey, Eloise. Hey, Mandy. So, yes, yeah, some really exciting things come in. Although I forgot to use my coupon codes for the bonus days. So don't forget, if you have got coupon codes from any orders you placed in July, don't forget to use them. Hello, Kathleen. Nice to see you all this evening. So now everybody's kind of hopping on. I will get started. This is some really, really scratch grid paper. We're going to get a bit inky and a bit messy. Um, I've got my paintbrush. Um, this is just a random, I, you can use the water painters from Stampin' Up, but I quite like the um, the bristle on this one for this technique, because we're going to use quite a lot of water. Um, do try and get clean water, this is just being used with the ink that we're going to use. And then I've got my paint palette, and I've got my two colours, Calypso Coral and Lemon Lolly. So I'm just going to put some more in here in case I want more. Calypso Coral and Lemon Lolly. So those are the two colours that I'm going to be working with and Lemon Lime Twist too. When the container of die cut shapes you sorted so carefully throws itself in the air and empties it. <gasps> oh no, Wendy. That reminds me That reminds me of the time I tipped my embossing powder all over the floor. <laughs> oh, not when you spent so long organising it as well. Bless you. I threw my dies all over the floor earlier today. They're only in a box though, like container wise and luckily the box didn't break and um, this is pretty peacock but that was for a project that I started so the inspiration for tonight if you can believe it when you get to the end card started here this was one I made that I was going to do with you guys tonight um using some pretty peacock and some ink blending um and I like the card I just didn't think it was all that exciting ah oh, bless you Kathleen yes yeah, Saturday morning's watercolor course You'd be leaving for beach? Well, I'll tell you what, I'd rather be leaving for beach vacation. Um, so I'm still to send out the details for that. They'll be coming out to you tomorrow. So yes, 
So Pretty Peacock, that colour, and then I went water colouring with Pretty Peacock, and then I've ended up with Calypso Coral and Lemon Lolly. So I've got some cardstock. Um, now I will say, I have not used the Stampin' Up! watercolour cardstock for this. Um, so if you try this technique with the Stampin' Up! watercolour cardstock, which is lovely cardstock, and it has definitely got its uses, I'm using it in the course on Saturday, um, but it's not, it's, you know, every watercolour cardstock is different and has different properties and works differently. For this technique, I wanted more of a fluid, or something that allows the ink to move more. So just in case you did try it with the Stampin' Up! cardstock, you didn't get exactly the same results. This might be why. Hello, Gina. Good news. I'm on to lower your blood pressure. Bless you. I hope this will. I hope this won't get too stressful. I'm just going to close the blind because I've got a few shadows going on. Two seconds. That's a bit better. Okay. Um, and I've got a spritzer. You don't need a spritzer for this, but I'm just going to add on some. I've still got a bit of shadowing, so apologies. I need to sort my lighting out. Now it's getting more to winter. Well, there's no water in it that's a bit of a shame so um okay this could be an issue let me see if i've got another spritzer with water in it need to check because some of them have got alcohol in that's water okay so we're just going to spritz this background with water and this is why it's going to get a bit messy and I've got old grid paper and then I'm just going to use my brush to throw some of this water around. I probably should have got clean water but it's not too bad. So you can already start to see the paper is going to bow like this. Hello Judy, nice to see you this evening. Um, so we're going to cover up the middle so you can absolutely just hold the middle down um, but the watercolour paper will start to bow when it's got quite a lot of water on it but we want quite a lot of water on and then i'm just going to grab some of this lemon lolly ink i'm just diluting it a little bit to begin with so i'm just going to try and grab some in this second well if you can see what i'm doing i'm just diluting it ever so slightly and then i'm just going to place some really randomly. This is why I quite like a big floppy brush. So you can go into the middle as well, it's only because I've got my finger there, so I'm just placing some lemon lolly really randomly and you can go in and add some darker colour around the outside. We're going to create a kind of, almost like a kind of ombre effect going around the edges. And then I'm going to pick up some Calypso Coral that's been watered down. So that's the Calypso Coral there. Can you see? My camera keeps highlighting on my thing. So this is watered down Calypso Coral. And I'm just going to pop that around the edge as well. Water is your friend in this. Can you see how it's already starting to wick in here? That's what we want. And we can just keep adding more. More water. I love playing with watercolour. Doesn't matter that it's a bit darker there. We're going to add some dark colour in anyway. I'm just holding it down in the middle so that it doesn't bow too much. But you get some nice effects if you start letting it bow and change. And you want to come in, I would say a fair way, because of the design of this card is going to be afterwards. And then this is the concentrated Calypso Coral. So you can see that I'm just going to add some darker spots and just let it, just kind of let it run and bleed and blend. I'm trying to watch the comments at the same time. I've had an awful week full of sadness. Oh, Shaz. Take your mind to a watercrafting island while watching. Absolutely. Oh, it's hard sometimes, isn't it? So this is looking a little bit dark, but that's fine because the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab some water and we are going to, and this is what I mean when you want a reactive watercolour surface. Um, some of the other watercolour surfaces, once you've placed the ink down, it won't um, move. I don't know if you can see it's moving and interacting. Um, 
and it won't let you do that as easily. So I'm just popping and it dilutes it again. So what you're doing is adding more water back in, but just creating those textures, those patterns. Um, and I'm just going to grab some cloth. Now, if you if you go too far and you either take too much off or you decide you want more lemon lolly kind of coming in, just go ahead and add some more in. Just add some more colour in down here, look. Around the edges. I really like the patterns that are forming here. I'm just going to put a little bit more lemon lolly, I think, just to show you what kind of happens. It starts to push the ink away, pushes that calypso coral away and merges it in with that lemon lolly. On my watercolour course, we talk about um, kind of different tide marks and effects that can be created. Um, but I won't go into it here. It's a bit it's a bit in detail, but it is to do with the drying time of the cardstock. OK, so I think I'm kind of happy with how that's looking. It's a bit random. See, this is what I mean by crazy watercolouring. So all I'm going to do now is pop something. Limoncello, I know, right? Yeah, limoncello. So I'm just going to pop something in the middle just to kind of help keep that cardstock down. And then I'm going to leave that to dry naturally, I think. I've just decided I want a bit more texture. I love the patterns that are starting to be created over this side. So I'm just going to try and get a few more of them in over this side as well. And you do that just with water. By adding some more water in. That will start to create those patterns. Uh, me too, Joanna, me too. I'm I'm literally nearly finished the course guide for lesson three. Can't believe we're on lesson three already. I'm just starting to advertise lesson uh, the next course as well, which is crazy because we, we haven't even kind of got halfway on the on the first course. Um, but you know, time time is of the essence before Christmas. So yeah, if anybody's interested in joining the course, I'll pop the link in the YouTube description below here. So I'm going to leave that to dry naturally. Um, so that's all just going to go to one side. And you're never going to get the same background twice. I'll show you some of the other ones that I've I've made as well. And what we're going to need to do now is quite a lot of stamping. Um, and I've got, oh, I've already got them out. Prepped and ready, am I? Um, I've got the outline die, the outline stamps. Ah, oh, thank you, Joanne. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Um, I'm absolutely loving doing it. I'm glad someone convinced me to do it. Um, so this is the one I'm using and this one. So not these infill ones, these outside ones. Oh, you can join live, Gina. That's amazing. Absolutely brilliant. It, I love it when people can join live. But obviously, you can catch up on the replay at any time as well. We're going to stamp in Versamark. So this is the kind of watermark stamp pad. It's like a sticky ink. And I'm going to need some white heat embossing powder. So I'm not sure how best to do this. I think I might cut this cardstock in half. Because then it will fit neatly in my tub. And I don't know how many of these I'm gonna need. So I'm probably gonna end up doing more than I need. If you can't see where you've stamped when you stamp with the Versamark, um, just do put it into the powder. Ah, oh, hey, Claire, you're not late. Never, never anybody's late with this. So once you put it in the powder, you can then see where you've stamped and then you can go ahead and stamp again um, and not risk um, stamping over the one that you've already done. So because I know I've got two there, I can come up and do a couple there. And then again, just pop that in the powder. I love this tub from Ikea. It's a perfect size for doing this. So am I gonna get another big one in at the top there? I think I am. So don't actually know how many I need because I haven't made the card in advance. So this could be interesting. 
<laughs> so three big ones, two small ones so far. Let's pop that there. And then I'm just going to do another big one. And another couple of small ones, I think. And that should be enough. We can always do more later. So the watercolour background is just drying nicely. You get some different effects if you let it dry, air dry and um, heat dry it. Um, ideally, when there's a lot of water, you want it to, to dry naturally. Otherwise, you start getting those tide marks. But, but they can also be fun. You total up your wish list for the new mini. Oh, Wendy. How much did it come to? <laughs> I know, sometimes I total up my wish list as well. Luckily I forgot to order a few bits and pieces because so I need to put another order in now. Um, I say luckily only because I'm not sure my bank would have authorized the payment in one go. Um, but it's, it's all good, isn't it? So I'm just gonna heat, but that's not good for the blood pressure. That is so true. Okay, I'm just gonna heat and boss this. Oh, wow, 1,500, that, that's a lot. There's so many nice things in this catalogue, isn't there? It is, a, it is a really nice one. <laughs> yes, maybe a little bit of cutting back would be in order. Certainly not, not all in one gay, that's for sure. I always kid myself and say I don't need any more Christmas stuff, and then I see the catalogue and I'm like, oh yeah, I do. Especially because I've just sold a lot of my retired things as well, so um, my, my shelves are actually almost bare of Christmas. To one four nine nine. Gina's got it right. That's the way to do it. Okay, so that's now all kind of heat embossed and we can go ahead and just do a little bit of fun watercolouring. I'm going to bring in the stumping up. Um, oh my, only because I don't know where they are. This is my trusty water painter. So I might just bring this one in. And we'll do a little bit of watercolouring. Same, same colours, exactly the same colours. I am running a paper share again this time. So I have advertised it, but I don't think many people have seen it. So if anybody's interested, um, absolutely gorgeous array of papers and I'm just um before you kind of wonder what I'm doing here I'm just laying some water down so this is going to be wet on wet technique so I'm just laying some water down and then I'm going to add some color in in a minute so if you think what's she doing just painting it and there's nothing coming out um that's why I'm just adding some water for the moment and then we can pick up some of this lemon lolly and we can go ahead and paint that in there so yeah, if anybody's interested, paper share so many gorgeous papers. I couldn't decide, so I've done. I've chosen nearly all of them. So there's eight different selections of design series paper and the four speciality papers as well, um, and that's that'll be thirty five pound posted. Um, so if you're interested, give me a shout. Let me know. Um, I'm taking bookings. It needs four to run. Um, don't book online. You just let me know, and then when it's kind of sorted and we've got four, um, then I'll give you a shout for payment, and then it come out to you closer to September. So. September the 6th, I can order. So you've got until then to kind of give me a shout and say you'd like to get involved. So that's the lemon lolly gone down. And now I'm just going to add in, and this is the bit I love. Look at that. This radiant sunflower. The water just wicks. So those of you who follow me know I've used this. I've done this, but not in these colours. I used um, daff Daffodil Delight and... Um, I'm going to read Wendy's comment in a minute. Um, I used Daffodil Delight and Pumpkin Pie in my last ones. So this is a bit different with the Calypso Coral and Lemon Lolly, but it's gorgeous. Uh, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow, Claire, as well. I've got a class tomorrow. 
um, which I'm excited for. Haven't seen everybody there for a, a month, so really nice to get together. I was chanting, I don't need any more autumn Halloween Christmas stuff, and then they do that to you. I know, I know. Honestly, it's it's really pretty. Um, and I've got the retreat coming up as well, so I've got the stuff designed for that. I'm so excited. Although I really, I really should get on and plan my classes and stuff. But I'm I'm just too excited with all the Christmas stuff. Um, but I have got classes in between now and Christmas to plan for as well. So again, lemon lollies just going on. These are all going to be painted the same way. So this is very therapeutic. Um, I maybe should have done a couple in advance, but I haven't. So you're going to have to sit here and watch me paint all of them. But I love just watching how that water wicks and that colour. You can then pick up some of that Calypso coral and just dab it in. Let it run up the leaves. I've been painting a shed at a gardening group that I go to and I've painted the enormous sunflowers on the side of it and it I must say I, I was impressed with how it came out um I wasn't expecting it to come out quite as beautifully as it did the the greenery and the leaves not so much but the sunflowers came out really well oh bless you Dina thank you just when you think you've seen it all, stamping up, put it out of the bag. A hundred percent pulled it out of the bag with this one. Yeah, gorgeous. And so different as well. Some colouring sets, some stamping sets, some papers that will last all year round as well, not just Christmas. Um, so, yeah, absolutely brilliant. And if you're not a demonstrator and you're thinking, how can I figure out, how can I see all this stuff early? You need to come and join the team. The link is below. You'd be more than welcome. Um, we've got a lovely group of, of ladies in the team. Um, really nice to see friendships being formed. And we're currently planning for on stage in March. So that's really exciting. Just struggling to come up with a, a plan. There's so many options for where we can stay, how we can get there. But we're um, just working together to figure it out, which is great. I love lemon lolly. It's such a light colour, but just beautiful. Actually much nicer than so saffron. And I was really worried when they got rid of so saffron that we were going to be without a pale yellow. But look how these colours are just coming together. And that's what I love about watercolouring. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I'm just going to go on and do this other, this other big one over here, just while I'm in the zone of doing the big ones. And then we'll see how our background is coming on. Once it's kind of, once the background's kind of semi-dry, you can absolutely use a heat tool on it. It's just when it's got a lot of water on it, um, I tend to try and let it dry naturally. Um, I have done a couple of backgrounds like preparing for this so if this one doesn't turn out great or it doesn't dry in time um, I can use one of my backups let's say oh isn't it I know Mandy that is what I love the calypso coral running up the petals um it's worth it the whole getting the whole stamp set is worth it just for that it's gorgeous and you're just picking it up and all you're doing, people say, oh, I can't watercolour. And all you're doing is just dabbing. And that's the nice thing about this wet on wet technique. So actually, you really need to do an awful lot. You just dab the colour in and watch it run up the petals. Gorgeous. So then I just need a bit more ink. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my lemon lolly more drops of that. The re are brilliant for this. Now you can do this with the stamp pads, um, but it's just easier with the re and I like just using a palette, a paint palette. Keeps it all nice and tidy. So then we can go and start working on our small ones. That's quite a lot of water actually, so let's just try and move some of that around. 
And honestly, it doesn't matter if you go outside the edges. It's a bit easier because we've got it heat embossed. Um, but yeah, it really doesn't matter. If you go outside the lines, because we're going to die cut all of these anyway. Um, so let's just grab a teeny bit of Calypso Coral. These small ones. just a little bit they tend to come out a bit darker than the light ones so if you think it's too dark I don't necessarily think this is but if you do think it's too dark you can go in and you can just take some of that ink away either just with the brush I'm being really naughty I'm just wiping the brush on my hand then um, but ideally you would have a piece of kitchen roll and then you can go in and add some more yellow if you wanted it more yellowy in the middle just again, you can just really play. You can really play with watercolour, certainly on a cardstock that takes it well, like this one does. I am going to use the dies to cut these out. I'm not going to sit here and fussy cut them all. So again, just grabbing a teensy. I'm going to try and get a bit less on my brush. It was a bit intense last time. So just trying to get a bit less. That's so lovely. Has Lemon Lolly taken over fresh? Oh, Gina, there's a question. It might have done. I haven't used, I haven't used purple for a while. Um, shockingly, I've been creating more with blue. I don't know where that came from. Um, but if you look at my, it's really interesting. To, if you look at my Instagram feed, you'll see um, I did make a card the other day with purple just because it felt I felt like I was neglecting it a little bit. Um, but yes, Lemon Lolly has become a bit of a favourite of mine, actually. So, and I'm not normally a yellow person, but it's so pretty. Again, just grabbing a teensy bit. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm just working through grabbing a bit, but then just kind of diluting it to make sure that it's not super super strength on my brush. Make sure I get some of that yellow through because I think we're going to need the yellow as a bit of a contrast against the background. <gasps> I know, Joanna. Mandy, this is just a different brand of um, cardstock. Um, so there's loads of different brands out there. It is a um, cold pressed cardstock, but it's smooth. Um, so I searched quite hard for this one. If you want to give me a shout, please do. Um, and I'm always happy to talk cardstock or products. But yeah, this is just a so it's a it's a cold pressed, which means that it's not been ironed flat, like hot pressed. The way I try and explain it in the course is like think of an iron um but it's um but it's smoother than most cold presses and it gives you that flexibility there's so many different brands out there i just i just recommend trying them but it can end up as a quite an expensive hobby just trying out what card, card stocks <laughs> i may have a few okay so there is our um, and they don't look, um, they look a bit funny to you on the camera screen because you can't see the outsides, but we're going to cut them so they're not going to look funny soon. There's all of our paintings. Aren't they beautiful? Okay, so let's put this out of the way before I spill ink everywhere. I printed off my decree absolute from years ago and it's sat under, now sat underneath my ink. It's not the original copy, luckily. So, okay, let's bring in the um, die cut machine, the cut and emboss machine, or the toaster. Shall I show you how our background is doing? So this is how our background is doing. That's looking gorgeous. We're going to play with it again a little bit more, um, but not quite yet. Or shall we? It's a bit too, it's a bit too damp still. It's still quite damp, but yes, it's looking great, isn't it? I love it. I love how all those colours come together. So let's grab some plates. 
and we will grab our snips as well. Um, my plates are a little bit marked, so I don't like running things through. Oh, these are still wet as well. That's not ideal. Okay. I'm just going to do the ones that are dry. The ones we did at the beginning are dry. And the little ones that we've just finished are wet, so we might end up having to do these separately. It doesn't really matter if they're a bit wet, but uh, I'm such an impatient crafter that I'm quite often. The only thing not to do with wet stuff is put it in a punch. Really don't suggest putting wet cardstock in a punch. It doesn't, doesn't work so well. It gets all stuck. You use gold line cold press 200 Amazon sell. Yeah, that was where I started, Joanna, with the gold line. It's a, a massive, it's a massive pad of, of cardstock. Um, but yeah, this, this one isn't, but the gold line was where I started because you want to just be able to play freely with it, don't you? You don't want to be restricted by thinking, oh, it's really expensive. Um, I can't, I don't want to mess it up and therefore I'm not going to do it. But you, you want to be able to have a play with it, don't you? So there's our flower. They come out gorgeous. So we just need to go through and die cut all of those, really. Yeah, absolutely, Joanna. Just be able to have the freedom to let loose. Um, when I first took a watercolour course years ago, um, that's um, that's what I bought just so I could literally just use it. Almost almost use it and throw it away afterwards, you know? I just wasn't worried. Yes, yeah, so these little ones might just need a helping hand with the heat tool. Or we might move on to just playing a bit more with that background while they dry. Let's just put those there to dry for a second. And I'm just gonna bring this background in. So these are looking great, look at those. So this is our background and I'm just gonna grab my water painter and I'm just gonna grab some kitchen, some towel. It's actually toilet roll, it's not ideal, but it'll do the job. Um, just fold it up so that it will cover the, the background here. And then all I'm going to do is bring back my ink, dilute some of that Calypso Coral. Can't see what I'm doing again, can you? So I'm just diluting some of that Calypso Coral and then I'm going to um, flick over the background. Because that's quite light, I'm actually just going to, I might just leave that, I'm not sure. Last time I dabbed it off, we'll see how we go. And this is one of the reasons you want it to be fairly dry, because um, otherwise it, it won't sit in those neat speckled dots. So I'm just going to pull that away, and that makes it just even fainter, which is really pretty. And then for the outside, I'm just going to grab some plain water. And put some splashes over. Let that settle for a kind of couple of seconds. It starts to interact with the water again. And then hopefully, if I've been patient and left it long enough, when you start to take it away, you can see. So we've got darker marks in the yellow and lighter marks in the Calypso coral. 
um, just adds a bit of definition and texture. And you can keep going back in until you're happy with the results you've got. Bigger drops, obviously smaller drops, whatever you want to do. And you can leave them to air dry naturally or you can use the cloth. Absolutely. Oh, bless you, Eloise. The Christmas stuff is lovely, isn't it? It does. It comes out really nicely. Gives that real kind of texture, which you it look it can look a bit flat backgrounds otherwise, but just that and that would I mean it would look lovely. I've tried to do a Christmas background. That's where I was going with the pretty peacock and the pine trees. Didn't really work out. What was in my head didn't come out onto paper. So I'm just going to give these a bit of a quick blast with the heat tool. Kind of dry, and then we'll grab the little dye and a little flower, and that's gonna die cut these. So yeah, so my last card, the card I tried to do for didn't didn't work out in my head. I haven't practiced this one, um, but it kind of felt like it would work. So we'll see. And then our little ones start to come out. Because they are um, a little bit wet, some of the ink is transferring over onto the plate. So you might just want to clean the plates afterwards. Certainly before you die cut anything that is white. So you don't want nice Calypso coral ink all over your white. more I'm thinking this hopefully will be enough and then we can start to put it all together So that's all of our die cutting. I'm planning on doing something similar for my swaps um, at backstage at the end of end of um, August. I'm off to Las Vegas for backstage, which is insanely exciting. Um, I'm I haven't made my swaps yet. I've got the prep for 15 of them. I've no idea how many I'm going to get made between now and then, as well as everything else I've got to do. <laughs> but I found I've wanted a few to go with. Okay, so this is kind of dry. I am just going to blast this with the heat tool as well. Just making sure that's properly dry. Oh, it would, wouldn't it? Gorgeous sunset background. Absolutely, Joanna. Yeah, really pretty. So it's just a tiny, teeny bit damp, but I didn't want to... It, it warps. Can you see the cardstock all warps? But you stick it down with some nice, strong glue, and it normally flattens itself out after a while. Okay. 
So next thing I'm going to do is just grab a die cut from the Something Fancy dies. I don't know why, but this is very underused for me. It's got some lovely label shapes. So I'm just using the middle one of the middle three and going to die cut that from white cardstock um, if I can find a scrap. That's thick, but it doesn't really matter. So this is where I say you ought to clean your plate. I'm just going to wipe it on my sock because I don't want that red ink coming off. But I was going to wipe up my trousers, but then that's probably not such a good idea. Socks are okay. So let's die cut that. And then the sentiment that I thought I would use is from this one, which is Charming Sentiments, and it's wishing you everything wonderful. And it just fits really nicely. Oh, I've already taken it out, and it's already here. I just need to decide what colour to stamp it in. I hadn't got that far in my planning. Let's try Calypso Coral. I don't think a black or a grey would look right. Let's, let's try this. I'm thinking, is there anything darker? Maybe a Cajun craze, actually. I want something a bit darker so it stands out. But in a similar colour family. Yeah, let's go for that. Crypto Coral, just a little bit wishy-washy on the stamping. Wishing you everything wonderful. Ah, and we need some leaves as well, so we can do those. We can do those in a minute. So that's going to go on dimensions. Dimen dimensionals. Love a dimensional. Um, I'm going to try and get it as central as possible. I'm intrigued to know if you can see how all these flowers are going to fit on here. Has anybody guessed what I'm doing yet? Here's a game. Here we here's a good game. So anybody who can guess the kind of card design the best um, first will win this card. I'll send it out to you. Ah, uh, hey Danielle. Thank you. This is a Lizzie background, isn't it? She loves a background. So how are all these flowers going to fit onto this card? If you can guess, there's all the flowers. Lay. You think I'm going to layer them? Gina thinks I'm going to layer them. How are all these going to fit on this card? There we go. A wreath card, Wendy thinks. That would that would be lovely, but I don't think my background's big enough for it. But you might have given me an idea. So this is going to go. This is going to go as centrally as possible down here. Keep guessing. Keep guessing. Neither of those are quite right. That's straight. No, never is. Ah, oh, bless you. Thank you, Judy. I mean, it looks lovely just as it is, doesn't it? You could absolutely just go for that and that would be lovely. Any more guesses? Because I'm going to start making it in a minute. Frame the sentiment. A posy. Danielle, you are the closest, I think, so far. So... I'll give you two, I'll give you like five because I know there's a bit of a lag. I'll give you a few more seconds. Yes, well, honestly, Wendy, that would be amazing with them all coming around in a massive wreath. I've done it with other flowers. I love wreaths. Box frame. Oh, now I've got a guess. Who do I think, who do I think is more right? Frame the sentiment or a box frame? Okay, we're going to go for it and I will, uh, I will figure out. So I'm actually just going to cut. This is a bit brutal. Um, or am I, am I going to, so basically what I'm doing, this, you'll get it, you'll get it now. I'm going to go around like this. So I think frame the sentiment was, was actually kind of good guess, Danielle. We're going to go around like this. 
but I'm going to trim off the excess um, and we're going to layer them all like round. This is why I had no idea how many I actually needed. It's going to look a bit like this. I mean, it looks rubbish now, but it's going to look, it's going to look good. And then you just, I might actually just go like that, stick them down. It's so whether I want to do dimensionals or not. I think I do. I love how you can see those designs coming out from underneath. I think it's going to look good when it's done. It looks a bit of a pot mess with it all hanging over the edge, but I'm going to go for it. So where's my dimensionals? So yes, I think Danielle frame the sentiment was absolutely right. So this card will be winging its way to you. You might regret that in a minute because it might not turn out great. <laughs> you might be like, oh, what do I want that for? Let's go with let's go with this. I'm gonna put them on dimensionals because I think it needs it. I think it's gonna look cute like that. And I had every intention of practicing, but you know, best laid plans don't always come to fruition. What I had in mind just didn't work. So it's now in my bin. I always say to people, you know, people are like, oh, how you make nice, such nice cards first time around? I'm like, I don't. You don't see what ends up in my bin. Ah, oh, bless you. Bless you, bless you. Okay, we're going to go on like that. So my plan was that you'd only need half the amount of daisies because you could trim them um, and use the other halves. And you could do that, but I've, I've, it's obviously not worked quite how I was expecting. So I'm just going to put some dimensionals. I don't really know how many we need. Kind of winging it. It's not what I enjoy doing, winging it live on YouTube, but... No, needs must. Oh, hey, Chris, I missed you jumping in there. Thank you, Joanna. I would not have spied your comment. I was too busy hoping and praying this was going to work. But the colours are just gorgeous, aren't they? This is um, Lemon Lolly, Chris, and Calypso Coral. Watercoloured, obviously. And we're just, just layering everything up right now. So that's stuck, that's stuck, that's stuck, that's stuck. So it's just these two to stick. And then we're gonna go one. That one's just stuck the two together so I can see kind of where I'm going with this. That one there. And then we want to go about there, there, and there. It's all a bit random. So these are going to go like that. Now, what we can do, I might not be happy with this gap up here, but we'll see. Now we can flip it over and we can trim away the excess. So I just use my snips. And I use the cardstock as a guide and we just trim. Can feel a bit nerve wracking at first doing it, but just take it steady and just use that edge as a guide. It feels a bit brutal packing away these edges. I think it's gonna look, I'm not gonna turn it over until I've got the rest of the card made. I'm gonna keep you in, I'm gonna keep myself in suspense as well. Okay, so that's that. So this background piece here, if I'm going to look at it, I'm going to, I can't wait. I'm going to take a sneak peek. Yes, I think it's worked. Okay, um, I'm going to 
pretty. I mean, it's all right after all. There's no purple. <laughs> Joanna doesn't want it anyway because there's no purple on it, and I don't blame you, Joanna. You need to. <laughs> I need to make you a purple one. Okay, so what I'm going to do? I've got lemon lolly card stock. I think this is right. Again, I'm just going to test it because I want you to see the full magic of it. That's what I want. So this was 14 and a half by 10 and a half, which is a full standard size card base. OK, so this is going to be a bigger than normal size card. And then this piece of cardstock is. Um, 15 point. Two. I don't know why, that's just a really random number. So 14.5 by 15.2. So that's a 0.7 of a difference. So we need it 10 and a half. We need it 11.2. So we need 11.2. And then that should give us an equal distance all the way around the card. Then we need some white card. You've got confidence it would be fab. Oh, bless you, Gina. Thank you. Got more, more confidence in me than I've got in myself some days. But no, it's looking it's looking good. So we need thick white cardstock. Yeah, that is thick. Sometimes it's hard to tell, isn't it? And um, we are going to make this a seven by five card. So we're going to cut it to five. No, we're going to cut it to seven inches. So it's going to be a big, big seven by five card by ten. So seven by 10 inches, and then we're going to score it at five. So I've mixed and matched all my dimensions because you know I love to do that. And then this one is going to sit in the middle like that. So it's going to have a nice big board around it, and I'm hoping that works. Um, I'm actually just going to make it a little bit less than seven by five because I want an equal distance all the way around. So I just need to trim off a little bit and I'm doing this completely by eye. So my apologies for anybody who kind of wants to recreate it. Sometimes you just gotta go with the flow. So I'm just trimming that off and then I'm just gonna look and see, is that equal distance? Yes, that looks much better. So all the way around. And a bone folder we need. Now, do I risk it and put that flat? I've got to test it. It's got to be tested away from your eyes. No, I want it all. I think it's all going to go flat. I'm not sure about the white background, actually, but I think we're going to go for it anyway. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Are you ready? That's what it looks like when it's all kind of cut off and you've got all the daisies. Pretty, huh? And that background really just shines through. Absolutely gorgeous. Kind of made your own design a series paper there. But yes, the back, the white background, I might just try it on a Clips of Coral cardstock. I'm not convinced it's going to work, but uh, just onto hand luggage. Bless you, bless you. Getting there, Katie. Just, um, I've just taken out my Calypso Coral, coral card stuff. I'm like, oh, I don't really like that colour. No, that doesn't look right, does it? Let's get rid of that. Let's go for the white. I think it, it looks lovely. It's just not picking it up exactly on camera. And then we'll get some sparkles on it as well, I think. Ah, oh, thanks, guys. Thank you, bless you. I just love, honestly, the daisy set is just beautiful. There's just so many things you can do with it. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I don't mind packing, but then I've only got me to pack for. I haven't got a whole family to, to pack for. Russ sorts himself out, whatever he forgets. Last time we went away on holiday to the beach, he forgot his swimming trunks. So um, he had to buy some more. And he never complains, bless him. He ne he's never, ever like, oh, why didn't you remind me? He's, he's full, fully grown adult, takes care of himself. I'm very blessed. And um, 
cost him £10 for a new pair of trunks. We only used them for half an hour in the sea, but he absolutely went ahead and bought them so that we could go and enjoy a little bit of sea time, which I'd been really looking forward to. So I was I was upset that he'd forgot them, but he grabbed a, a cheap pair from the beach shop and we were done. But yeah, we just sort ourselves out. and um, So I don't mind it too much. So I was wondering whether to put any of that up on dimensionals. I don't think it needs it. We're going for it just flat as is because there's enough dimension there on everything else. And then we can grab some, I'm hoping I've got some shiny sparkles that are going to suit. Oh, your floor is a magnet. What have you dropped now, Wendy? As long as you remember if Wallace, Steve has a bit of forgetting his. <laughs> Bless you, know he's always remembered his wallet. He's a good egg. Okay, so I'm looking for kind of anything yellow or orange or gold. I think we might end up having to go gold. I've got those ones, but they don't look quite right. I've got those lemon lolly ones, so we'll have a look at those. Some Oh, there's some gorgeous sparkles in the new catalogue. <gasps> I'm so excited. I really hope it gets here overnight. I'm keeping my fingers and my toes and my eyes crossed. Okay, so what have we got? Oh, is it an age thing, Gina, is it? <laughs> oh, bless you, Mandy. It really does, doesn't it? I think that's one of the reasons you wanted the daisies that little bit lighter and embossed in the white just sets it off because it's quite a dark, darker background. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So, and so much fun. That's the biggest thing about crafting is that it should be fun. Um, and it, that was a lot of fun to make. I love playing with watercolour. So if anybody is interested in the second watercolour course, the dates, it's on my website, but I'll be announcing it very, very soon. I'll pop the link below on this YouTube video as well. So if you're catching the replay, um, you can pop under and have a look. This is the bit I hate. I hate putting gems on. So, Danielle, if I ruin it now, I can only apologise. The amount of times I take gems off, put them back on, I can't decide where I want them. I think I need to go on a gem placement course. I have no, I have no idea what I'm doing. This is, I hate, it fills me with dread having to put gems on. I love the gems, but it stresses me out having to put them on a card. Is that just me or anybody else? <gasps> are you? That I mean, that is good to know. You usually ask Lizzie. <laughs> Lizzie, where do I put my gems, please? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That looks, that looks good to me. I think I'm going to stop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They do say an odd number should go on the card. And that's it. Glue a razor, dauber, scissors, bone folder. You think you're going to bed? Oh, wetty, bless you. I know sometimes it's just time to stop, isn't it? It's just time to stop. <laughs> oh, thanks, Joanna. Thank you, Gina. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm absolutely loving it. Gutted that we're, we're not even coming to an end. We've got half of it left. Lesson three on Saturday. So super excited. So much still to teach you all. Okay, okay. That's it. I don't know how I managed to get it. Near, near enough down on nine o'clock every single week. I only ever make one card. Some demos managed to make two or three in this time. Oh, you think it's a wild card? I love that. Triangular shape. Yeah, I know. I do try, but sometimes it just doesn't work out like that. I mean, it looks like a card with spots now, but bless you. Thank you, Shaz. Oh, I'm so pleased I made you feel better, Wendy. That's That means so much to me. Honestly, thank you so much for spending your evening with me, guys. I wouldn't be here if you didn't. Um, I remember the early days of my Facebook Lives when there was uh, me and maybe one other. And then slowly but surely people have joined and you start to watch and it really means the world. So thank you ever so much indeed. And I will be back next Thursday. Yes, I will be back next Thursday. I'm working Friday, Saturday, Sunday days next week, but I'll be here next next Thursday with a YouTube live. Just looking so stunning. Love the colours. Oh, bless you, Judy. Thank you. Thanks, Joanna. Go out there and have some fun with some watercolour. It's gorgeous. 
gorgeous, gorgeous medium. Love playing around with it. Grab yourself some ink refills or even just the stamping pads if you don't have them um, and just get, get playing, get crafty. Look after yourselves, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you all again next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye for now. Bye-bye.